Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're talking about poker in Thailand. And for those who are unaware, yes, uh, gaming, gambling is illegal in Thailand in, in virtually every way that counts for, for most folks. Now, there are exceptions, as we've discussed in other videos, horse racing, for example, lottery is another example here in Thailand that does have legal gaming in that context. Meanwhile, the, the point of this video is to talk about poker specifically. As, it's my understanding that as the, the present legislation on gambling sits in Thailand, poker sits on the list of games that are highly restricted. Like it's, there's like a two-tier system. There's, there's a system where you can get like a limited licenses for limited durations for certain games. And then there's the type where, no, no, you need like a big license. You need, you got to go through a real rigmarole and effectively you're not going to get it. They're, they're not issuing those licenses in, in any kind of routine manner. But the point of the video is, you know, I'm making this at a time when the dissolution of parliament appears to be imminent. I'm betting by the time this video goes up, betting no pun intended, but I'm thinking by the time this video goes up, we will actually see the parliament be dissolved. And so we're now sort of in the political season, if you will, in Thailand over here. But yeah, my point in, in making a case for poker is one, poker is not gambling in the sense that blackjack is gambling or roulette is gambling or craps is gambling or slot machines are gambling. Poker is a skill game. There's a reason you see the same roughly two dozen, some mix of roughly the same two dozen people on the final tables of the major poker tournaments around the world all the time. They're always, they always seem to be coming back. It's not because they're the luckiest people on earth. It's because they're highly skilled at playing poker. And I would even go so far as a buddy of mine and I used to have this like running joke. Is it a sport? Is it a game? You know, what is it? And, and it was always this kind of nebulous thing. There were certain things where is being a jockey in horse racing a sport. He said for years, no, that's not a sport. The horse is doing the work. He eventually relented and said, yeah, no, I see how that's kind of a sport. The, the jockey is, do, the human is doing something that has a sport, you know, a physical, it, it has physical connotations. It has physical attributes. You have to have physical skill to be a jockey, you know. And then meanwhile, like NASCAR, we, we had a big, we had a big back and forth. Is NASCAR a sport or not? Or is it just a game or whatever it is? And I, I kind of agreed with him. He said, look, the machine's doing all the work. Yes, you got to drive. There's a lot to that. I think there's a solid argument to be made, and I can totally understand the argument that being a NASCAR driver, those guys get dehydrated. It's insanely hot. It's crazy. Like, and then they're just doing insane speeds. You know, I, I, I think you can make the arguments of sport. At the same time, I, I understood his argument that it wasn't. In the case of, spo of poker, I don't know if you can argue it's a sport in the sense of, but, you know, I mean... Hell, now they think gamble or they think you know games online. You know, playing video games online is esports. So if you've got esports, then I think poker is definitely a sport if that's a sport. So my point being though is poker is fundamentally a skill game, and it would be possible, and I think it would be highly advisable and a good idea for Thailand to think about legalizing just poker rooms, rooms that only specialize in poker. And you can legally define poker in such a way that, no, people are not going to be able to wiggle around and, if it, and essentially just have de facto casinos. No, you can, you can make, because again, and the different, a big difference between poker is, and, and other games in a casino is poker is not playing against the house. The players are playing against each other. The only thing the house provides is a dealer. Generally, they take a fee for the services they provide in spreading the game, etc., I would make a strong argument. I, I, you know, I've talked about this in videos before, where you know Thailand's thinking about legalizing gambling. They've they've had a commission that's that's gone through and looked at it. I, I think there's a lot of support for it. I think there's also a lot of criticism of it. I can totally understand Thailand keeping it illegal forever. By the way, I I, I see the argument there, and quite honestly, I could understand it if they did that. In many ways, it might not be a bad idea. But if we are going to go down the legalization route, I think it would be a good idea if folks at least looked at the notion of card rooms, poker rooms, specifically poker rooms that just cater to people that want to play poker 
And again, as I discussed in other videos, that might be a way of kind of spreading out that gambling wealth, so to speak, rather than just having one sinkhole in the form of a casino. You could, you could have it kind of, you know, it, it'd have to be highly regulated, obviously. No doubt about that. No children could be present on those premises. You couldn't have people under the age of 20 there. I get all that. that I, in fact, that's no problem at all. All gambling is regulated in the United States. Full disclosure, I used to work in the gaming industry when I was going through law school, and absolutely, you know, we all agreed that you had to be over 21 in that jurisdiction in order to both come into the casino and to play in the casino. So, point I'm trying to make with this video is, I think there's something to be said for the notion just specifically of looking at legalization of poker and poker rooms here in the Kingdom of Thailand.